Amen, amen. Okay, so the Shabbat Sendet is beginning right now, between the evenings is about to begin. So there's a blessing, there's a teaching on blessing as well that we like to share. There's a very important teaching on blessing that we like to share. Um, um, usually we call this the Baruch, the Baruch, Baruch. Baruch, the Baruch, and the Baruch are the blessings. Now, in um, among conventional uh, Hebrews and Orthodox Jews, the blessing is um, known as the Baruch Ata Adonai, Baruch Ata Adonai, Baruch Ata Adonai, Baruch Bless Ata. You, you, male, we say ante. In the good is we say ante. But first, just let's learn it as it is. It's the Baruch Ata Adonai or Baruch Ata Adonai. They say Adonai instead of saying Yod Hey Wow Hey or instead of saying Yahweh. Um, Baruch Hashem, which is the blessed name. And there's, as you probably already know, there's some um, controversy as to what is the true and the proper pronunciation. But we have come to the, we have recovered from studying the Gutas and the Ethiopic and even the Met of Kedus of Negus and Neges, that the proper pronunciation of the Yod He Wow He, which some say Yod He Vav He, but it's not the Vav. So there's, some differences between the forced Hebrew that many um, Orthodox Jews, European and the Polish and the German Jews, namely, um, and the pronunciation of the, the Ethiopian Hebrews coming from the Ethiopic. You might have been told that the Ethiopic is not Hebrew, and, and there's, this, there's this false way of looking at the linguistics which makes it seem as though Ethiopia is not at the core and at the center. But from studying of the Met of Caduce in the scriptures, one can see that Ethiopia is at the very root, even from the very Ganeta Aden, from the Garden of Eden. So as we are now entering into this um, sabbatical time, there are certain blessings that um, accompany um, what's often known as the Shabbat Seder, or the 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 senbet the senbet uh, sirat the sirat of the senbet which is the order of the Sabbath Orthodox Jews at this present time who are practicing um, Jews are practicing Judaism a form of the ancient Hebrew faith um, at this time they're probably gathering with their family they probably have gone out maybe to purchase some um, Manischewitz or the Kedem, um, the Sabbath wine, as well as, you know, breads and, and, and fruits and certain foods, basically, meats and that is according to the way they practice. But the, the, main, perp the main point is that there's a meal. There's a meal which accompanies the, the, the family that keeps the Shabbat, the Sendet, stays together, grows, is, is strengthened, also becomes um, prosperous um, within the, I guess you could say, the worldly sense, you understand, because of how they are ordering their lives. So Sabbath keeping and the keeping, the remembering of the Sabbath to keep it holy and the keeping of the Sabbath set apart is very important. But there is a way or the way, the truth and the life. And what's interesting as we study um, uh, Judaism from the different perspectives, keeping keeping our foundation and keeping the core, the, the, that Ethiopic core and that reference point. We have a reference point as black Hebrews and as Rastafari Jews or Judahites of the line of the tribe of Judah. We have a a, a core, and that core is the Ethiopic, and that core is the Metaf Kedus of Negus and Neges, that we know as, as we've been speaking on it in this particular prophetical time, as the Book of the Seven Seals, the Metaf Kedus of Negus and Neges. Now, if you can see this, I don't know if you can see this right there, you can see that there are 
um, seven seven seals. The seven seals actually say uh, me, se, ha, se, the top row, and then it says e, du, se. And there are seven types of of um, scriptures within the Met of Kedus. So these are the seals. These are the seven seals that Revelation is pointing to. So seven types of scripture. Now, Proverbs teaches that um, the wise woman builds her house on on these the these seven pillars, like seven 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 pillars, like foundation. You understand seven levels, but the foolish woman tears down the house, her her house with her own hands. Now, this is a, a allegory. There is a, there, there's a metaphor, it's a simility, a, sim, a simile there. Um, and as we get to the root of this simile, or what we call the mishle in the Hebrew, or misale, even look at that in the Hebrew, a parable is called mishle, according to the fourth Hebrew that's spoken today. But in the Ethiopic and the Royal Amharic, we know it as a misale, a misale. So you can see that the Ethiopic and the Biblical Hebrew, you understand, is close, is basically one and the same at its core. This is why we keep that reference point of the Metzhav Kedus of the Book of the Seven Seals. Now, it's important for us as we as we move forward, let's just put this right here, as we now... Um, move forward with the blessing because we like to spark this up. Yes, there's a blessing. There's a blessing for the Kane Bosom. There's a blessing for the Kane Bosom. You understand? Some will say um, the the herbs. You understand? The herbs that are named after Mary and John or, or Mariam and Johannes or Juan that's often called marijuana there is a blessing because we say this is a a sacred thing it's a holy thing it's set apart you understand so we have to also learn how to keep it holy and to keep it within the context of separate and sacred now as we go into this, the Senbet as we said other Jews and Old, Old Testament Hebrews would drink wine and bread. The, the bread and the wine was, and even in the New Testament, we have the bread and the wine is a very important symbol. And this symbol, at the root of it, is the Melchizedek, is Melchizedek. Melchizedek is at the root of, of that. We can see where Abraham and Melchizedek met and how, how Melchizedek brought the bread and the wine. And this was a, a Eucharist. It was it was a holy seder or 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 a supper. It was like it was like the the Eucharist that Christ also said, "Do this in remembrance of me." So there was a older tradition, or rather, we can say a, 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 a holy practice. You understand, with the family coming to de- together in the eve. You understand of the Shabbat, which the Babylonians call to this would be Friday evening. You understand, but if you go out and you party and you do the worldly thing, you really are practicing the other Sabbath, which is often called the Devil's Satan Sabbath, because you are not remembering. You understand, you're not remembering the true purpose, the true Creator who created this as being set apart for his purpose, but really it is for man. Because the Sabbath, you understand, was made for man. The Shabbat was made for man, not man for the Shabbat. This does not mean that it should be ignored, but it was made for man's benefit, man's benefit. However you look at it, there's a holistic function and purpose to the Sabbath and the Shabbat. You understand, there's even a healing purpose to the Shabbat. Yovas and um, but there's no rest, as it says, for the wicked. There's no rest for the wicked. So those who remain in the inclination of the world, the 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 the, the Jezor Hora, they who remain in that inclination to do evil. We all have in us that inclination, but we have to overcome that through through making our wills obedient to good influence. And then we will begin to gain that strength, you understand, over, over that. You understand, we will begin to overcome that, that weakness in us. It's not as though this, 
the negative inclination that we all have in ourselves. We, we cannot, as you say, fake the funk about it. We have to really confront that. You understand? Because even though we study sometimes 12 hours a day, you understand, and meditate and prepare the teachings and lessons, we also, are, we also go through those temptations. You understand? We also fall short, and we have to strengthen our, we have to overcome that. We have to purge. We have to clean. We have to clean our mind state. You understand? And it's important to recognize our holy way of life and the tools. This is why I said, study and show thyself approved. We're also going to touch on some Bible, um, some, some Bible uh, classes in the sense of keeping the, the, the Shabbat, the weekly Shabbat, is our Bible class. See, this is what I, was at the very core of it, keeping the Shabbat. This is our Bible class. This is our weekly Bible class. You understand? Because anyone who has, has, has truly begun to, to give themselves willingly, you understand, to, to be obedient to the good influences of remembering the, the Shabbat, remember to keep it holy, reading and studying as much as they can, and, and getting into this, this frame of mind, you begin to see a reworking of your rewiring of your mind state. Of the way of the way you start to think, the what you start to perceive, certain things that were already there, you begin to recognize what th there really is. You even begin to start to change your association. You know, Simca says that evil company corrupt good manners. This does not mean that the inclination to do evil, which all human beings, black, white, otherwise, have in them, would not seek to assert itself. But it means that now you will have more spiritual. The ultimate power is the spiritual power in this world and in the world to come. So, with that being said, let's get into the, the, the Baruch or the blessing. The Baruch, what we call the Baruch, Baruch. The Baruch, which is the blessing. Um, it is both Baruch, or some would say Baruch, in a, in a Hebraic sort of sense. And we say Baruch. Bamarinya and in the good is it means to prosper the bless what does bless mean because we use bless a lot as as Rastafari and many of us may use bless you may hear one say bless up bless up bless up but what does bless really mean as we as we as we study to show ourselves approved when we go to our own root you understand we go to our own our own um as you say vine tree vine, you understand, our own fig tree. We sit on our own vine and fig tree. So as we start to study the, the Ethiopic and the royal and heart, we find that we have the word Baruch, you understand, Bamarinya. And one particular psalm that is in, and please take note of this, one particular psalm that's in is in Psalm 119 and 12. As we said in the Hebrew, the phraseology is Baruch or Barak. Baruch Atta Adonai, Baruch Atta Adonai, bless are you, O Lord, bless are you, Lord, bless are you, Master, Baruch Atta Adonai, Baruch Atta Adonai. This is how the blessing, the Hebraic and the ancient blessing begins. And in Ethiopic, in the Gutters, it's Abertu, you understand, in the Gutters sense, it's, you know, the, or the Amharic, Good is they sense is abertu, ante burukne, ante burukne, ante burukne, and you can see there's a there's a harmony, there's a harmony to that. There's a similarity of words. There's some words that are are different, but we'll touch on where those differences, um, what those differences are, and how those differences have come about, and if there really are differences. You understand? If these really are differences as we study the, the royal Amharic, it opens the Met of Kedus, the Amharic of his imperial mass. This opens the door, you understand, to the Ethiopic root as well as to the comparative for the Hebraic. You understand? And also expands to even the Septuagint and the Greek, but we'll touch on that in due time. We're building our foundation on the rock, which means the, the Belui Kidan which means the so-called Old Covenant or the Old Testament and the first five books. This is what the Orit 
uh, Nibab and the Torah portion and Torah readings are all about. So in Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 12, we have Abitu, Ante Barukne, Abitu. Avitu is an invocation similar to the Adonai, Adonai, but Avitu, Avitu means my father, his father, the father of the house. In other words, the God and the father of our Adonai, Adonai, Adonenu Yehoshua HaMoshia, the, the, the God and father of the Messiah is our God father. So when we say Avitu, Abetu. It's not like we, we say, oh, I was talking to Abetu. No, we don't use it like that. We, it's it's an invocation as we are praying. And we call on Abba, you understand? In the honorable Ethiopic sense, we say Abetu, Abetu, Abetu. Now, in the Hebrew and among Orthodox Jews, they would say Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. Now, the blessing, the full blessing, we have as Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Malek Ha Olam. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Malek Ha Olam. Ha Olam. And that means bless you, Adonai. Bless you, O Master. Bless you, O Lord. Eloheinu, our God, our, our power, El, Hail, our power. Malek, Malek, King Ha'olam, King of the world or King of the universe, interpreted as King of the universe. Now, when we now begin to understand that from the Met of Kedus in the scriptures, this is very important when we talk about bless. When the Rastafari say bless, and you hear some Rastafari say bless up, bless up, bless up. There's a desire to 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 do the right thing, but the knowledge of what the right thing is, is lacking, is missing. Thus, the teachings of His Imperial Majesty are essential, the teachings of His Imperial Majesty. And it begins with the Shabbat, it begins with the Sabbath, it begins with the mental ascent to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy, to keep it set apart. And then comes the study. As we study, this is where the discipleship, this is where the discipleship begins. This is where true discipleship and true Bible study, true discipleship and true Bible study meets, you understand, in the keeping of the remembering and the keeping of the Sabbath day as holy, as set apart. Now, the first part of the phrase is the Baruch Ata Adonai, Baruch Ata Adonai, or the Baruch Ata, the Baruch Ante. In the in the in the gutters, in the pure gutters sense, it's Baruch ante igzio, Baruch ante igzio, Baruch ante igzio. That's the gutters sense. In the Amharic sense, abetu ante Baruchne. In the in the Amharic sense, in the Hebrew sense, it's Baruch ata Adonai. Baruch Ata Adonai, Adonai. Baruch Ata Adonai. Adonai would actually be, according to the pointing of the Ethiopic, the Ethio Hebraic, would be the more correct. You might hear me sometimes say Adonai and, and may also say Adonai. You understand? Because we know that um, outside of the, the Ethiopic point of reference, there are these dissimilarities among different Jews, but even among different tribes, there are different speech patterns and different zemin and different ages as well. But that's a that's another point. Now, when we say Eloheinu, in the Ethiopic sense, we say Amlakne, Amlakne, Amlakne. Now, the word Amlak should not be confounded or confused with Amalek. Amalek, or Amalek, well, they say Amalek, but that is the Western way of pronouncing it. In the Ethiopic, and with the proper pointing and the proper emphasis, it would be Amalek, Amalek. It's a, it's a, it's a calf or cough. You understand? It's not a calf. It's not calf. It's not a soft K, 
but it's a hard K or the Kof or the Kaf. You understand? So it's Amalek when we're speaking about our enemy, Amalek. But now when we're speaking about the Ethiopic sense of the the worshipful one, the 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 one to be worshipped, you understand? We are speaking about Amlak. Am la the good is sense. Am la that corresponds to Eloheinu in the Hebrew. Now, in the in the Amharic sense, we have Am la kachin, Am la kachin, Am la kachin, Am la kachin. The third part, this phrase has three main parts, and we'll go to the whiteboard and we'll we'll try to break it down on the whiteboard. But just going through this right here, so we can um, bless the Aishans and 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 begin. This uh, uh, sabbatical, um, Malek Ha Olam, Malek Ha Olam, which means King of the World, but interpreted as King of the Universe in the Hebraic sense. Now, what would this be in the in the Gutter sense, and and how does it differ, or how is it reflective in the Royal Amharic sense? So we need to study in order to be able to accurately answer that particular question. Now in first Timothy in first Timothy chapter one verse seventeen. Let's go to first Timothy for a moment. First Timothy chapter one verse seventeen. Let's get our uh Schofield the Schofield um study Bible as you hopefully can see this here, the Schofield study Bible. Um Let's go to First Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy. Because we need to rastify and need to learn the the proper and the true blessing and the true meaning of blessing. Once again, the true meaning of blessing, if we didn't define the word barak barakate. Barakat is blessing. Barakata. Barakata. Is is a uh, is a more archaic root, but let's get the scripture first. One and one and one and seventeen. So first epistle one one and seventeen. It says it says here. This is Hawadi Apollos. He's saying, "How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Yeshua Hamashi Yehoshua Hamashiach." might shew forth all long suffering for a patent to them which should hereafter believe or my men exercise faith on him to life everlasting. I actually read from the verse 16. Now verse 17, which is the cited reference, it says, Now to the king, eternal, immortal, Invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, as we begin to study the Met of Caduce, what we find is that all the elements, all the elements that we seek, all the knowledge that we seek, all the questions that we have concerning the true and faithful walk is contained and is found and is answered within the scriptures. So what we need to do is to be diligent and to um, make the time, not to find the time, but to make the time, you understand, and especially to keep the appointed time, the, the, the weekly appointment is the Shabbat, except in extreme, and we saw my extreme emergencies, you understand, except in extreme cases. You know, don't violate the Shabbat because of, you know, something that is vain by comparison. But see, this is between, this is between the the father and his and his child, or the creator and his creature. That means it's between each of us individually with the Almighty. Because you can fool, you know, we can fool men and people, but we can fool the Almighty. You understand? And 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 our life. You understand? And the fruitfulness or the fruitlessness is going to be a testimony. You understand? We're speaking about fruit in the manifold sense of fruit. But here, Bamarinya, Medjimaraya uh, 2, 
Yahwariya Yapalo Samalikit, Wadat Imotewo, Sam Raf and Um Kutar um Um Asara Sabat says Bichawin Amlaka Le Mihon Le Mait Afal Le Mai Tayoun Le Zeminat Nagus Niskanana Kabur Iska Zalalem the rest Yuhun Amen. So when we find the Amen Within, for example, what Hawari Aulos is saying right here, he begins off this epistle and immediately goes into a and goes into a a a a, a prayer, a blessing, especially at, at verse at verse uh, seventeen. Verse seventeen is clearly is clearly a a one. A one line blessing, a one verse blessing, where he says in the English, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So when, when, when the Amen is there, it calls for a response amongst those who know the meaning of Amen. And there's another scripture that says, How can the unlearned? Say amen to the giving of praise, you understand, or to the ministry, if they do not know what amen means, if they know not the meaning of amen. And that's a, that's a very important um, um, scriptural portion um, concerning amen that we find in the scriptures, and, and we'll touch on that, make a note of that. Um, we'll touch on that as well. So we have to study and show. Study is very, very important. It's, it's very much the key. And of course, we might say this is kamatawak or ad nauseum. You understand? One will say, "Yes, I'm studying," but we have to encourage one another while it is day. You understand? While it, while they are in consciousness, you understand? Even provoke ones to good works. This is the teaching of his masters. The teaching of the Mushia. You understand? Now, this is one example of the third part of the traditional Hebraic uh, blessing. Where we have in the Hebrew, it is Malek Ha Olamin. Ha Olamin. Malek Ha Olamin. In the Hebrew, New Testament of First Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 17, it is Malek Ha Olamim. Olamim. A little different than the traditional Orthodox uh, Jewish and Hebraic Malek Ha Olam. Instead of Olam singular, it says Olamim, which means the world, but it's in the sense, in the Hebraic sense, Targum, uh, in the Targumo, in the sense of eternal. The sense, the idea, the interpretive sense is not just the king of the universe, but is to the eternal, to the eternal king. Now, why is this important to us at this point? Because it shows us that even in the New Testament, and particularly in the writing of our Coptic Hebraic brother, Hawari Apollos, that he is truly a, a, a Jew of Jews, a black Jew of black Jews, a Hebrew of Hebrews, because even in the the epistles, we have fragments. You understand of the ancient, the Hebraic blessings and fragments of the ancient Hebraic practices. So by studying even the New Testament uh, and 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 the, and the, and, the, and the writings, uh, epistles, the didactic, the Melikatoch of Hawari of Aulos, of, of, of Saul, from my Saul, but Aulos, we come to this understanding. We basically come to this understanding. So right here in First Timothy 1 and 17, we have a phrase that is also found in the conventional Hebraic blessing of Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Malek HaOlam, but instead of Malek HaOlam, we have Malek HaOlamim. In other words, instead of king of the world or king of the universe, we have eternal, eternal king, eternal sovereign, eternal ruler. Now, Bamarinya, first moving from, from the more good sense, we have Lezemanat Negus, 
Zemanat Negusle Zemanat, the Zemanat, which is interesting here because in the Ethiopic and in the Royal Heart we have the word um, Alam, Alam. We have Alam. Alam means world. The the the, the um, Jews say Olam. They pronounce that oin, that oin or the oin uh the oin or they pronounce that as a o as a o sound because of the 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 nuka or the nequit the pointing that they use from the time of Isra when Isra translated and interpreted within the square Babylonian Hebrew from the Ethiopic scrolls that he had received from the Ethiopian um, um, Hebrew king named Arma the king named Arma you understand was 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 one, they say that, I believe it was Arma. Some, I think, say that Arma might be the one that the Mohammedans went to. But we do have recorded evidence that at the time when Ezra and Nehemiah, Nehemiah had came out, they did not have all of the Old Testament scrolls. So they sent to the community that they knew was in the highlands or in what we call um, Ethiopia or East Africa, you understand, for the ancient... Um, Torah and, and, and other ancient writings up until the time of Shlomo or Solomon or Solomon. And in exchange, the Hebrews who were coming out of, who returned to Jerusalem from, from Babylon, had sent to the Ethiopian Hebrews, had sent to them the works of the prophets, the prophets who had prophesied in Babylon. So here's a very important interchange between the returning Israelites who, who returned to Jerusalem during the time of, of Nehemiah and, uh, and, um, and, and Ezra and the Ethiopian Hebrew community that was there um, from before the time of the renewal of the kingdom of David. That means before the time of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba's um, only son, Minulik, and the 12,000 that, that renewed the kingdom of David in the highlands of Ethiopia. Even before that time, from the time of Moshe or Musa, you understand, certain Israelites had, had went into that particular region. You understand, some say they got separated from the main group, so forth and so on. Um, many of the Beta Israel or the Ethiopian Falashas, they claim that before the time of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, many of their people were already in Ethiopia. And we know that the Talmud says that Moses was a general in the Ethiopian army. So we can just go figure. He married an Ethiopian woman, and his father-in-law was a priest. He was out there for 40 years. Um, there's, a, there's a whole world of experience that the Jews, many of the Jews who study these things in Talmud, they know that there's a connection there. Whether they want to, want to um, accept it or, or misinterpret it, they, they know this. You understand? And we know it because we have seen the, these documentation and documentation exists. You understand? Look for the Talmud that speaks about Moses in Ethiopia. You understand, and Moses serving as a general in the Ethiopian army, and even fighting against um, Egypt with the Ethiopian armies. It's very, very interesting, and that might help us also in the Egyptology, understanding certain events um, um, concerning Egyptology, and get out of this conventional whitewash um, misinterpretation. But to conclude this part right here, and to pronounce uh, the blessing, let's put this up. So we should be clear with this part right here. First Timothy 1 and 17, we have a, a, an example of a, of a, a benediction or a, a, a blessing. You understand? A blessing. That means there's something specifically said more than just bless up. You understand? In fact, blessing... It's not directional like that. We understand the roster for a sense, but like we said, that sense is because it has not been educated by the teaching and illuminated by the teachings of His Imperial Majesty. And this is the importance of this ministry. So, the blessing 
the, the blessing the abetu ante barukne abetu ante barukne and we find this as you said in psalm 119 and 12 bless be the father we also find ephesians 1 and 3 first peter 1 and 3 also says bless be the father Bless be the Father. And, and, and look that up because these are all blessings. When it's said, bless be the Father, that is a blessing. Bless be the Father. It's not just poetry. It's not just words on a page. No, it is a blessing. So when we um, recognize that we are getting a template and an example that we in faith are to follow as well, to learn of and to practice and to perfect, you understand, as Christ said, um, anyone who seeks to do the will of the Father will know whose teachings these are, whether I speak of myself, you understand, or whether it is another. Now, bless, Baruch, has a very unique meaning. It means to prosper his cause. Baruch, for us, means to prosper. It means to, to, to cause it to be abundant, to cause it to... It actually has a, has a literal meaning of multiplication, of, of, of multiplying. But the sense of Baruch is prosper his cause by full concentration. To prosper his cause by full concentration of our heart, soul, and might to the advancement of the Mengist, to the advancement of the Malkut to the advancement of the kingdom, to the advancement of the kingdom of the King of Kings and His Christ, the kingdom, the very kingdom of Ha Elohim, of Hashem. Now, with that understanding in mind, it's not just to prosper. It's not just to make abundant. You understand? But to prosper that which belongs to His cause. By a full concentration, a full concentration of our heart, of our, of our soul, of our, of our mind, and of our might or our strength to the advancement, to the advancement of the kingdom, to the advancement of the Mengist, to the advancement of the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. So once again, the Hebrew form of the blessing is often read and spoken as Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Malek HaOlam. That is the the Hebraic form of the blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Malek HaOlam. That's the Hebraic form of the blessing. Now in the in the good, the Ethiopic is Baruch Ante Egezio Lezemenata Negus Lezemenat Negus Amlat Kene Lezemenat Negus. In the Amharic sense, it's Abir to Ante Baruch Ne Ante Baruch Ne. But the 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 the, the, the word Baruch when we say Baruch. Baruch or Baruch, Baruch, as in and of itself is the beginning, the first step. I know these are a couple of phrases that ones will need to learn and practice in order to perfect, but it is best to first recognize the root. The root is Baruch. The Ethiopic word for blessing is Baruch. Baruch, Baruch. The Amharic word for blessing is Baruch. The Hebrew word for bless is Baruch, Baruch. In other words, Baruch in that sense, it is not a noun, like a thing, but it is a verb. It is to prosper his cause with the full concentration, the, 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 the full livication, one would say devotion, of our heart, of our soul, of our mind, and of our might, uh, either physical strength, financial strength, economic strength, to the advancement of the kingdom, of the King of Kings, and His Christ. So, more to come. 
stay tuned, my brothers and sisters.